remarkable planet, a world of living things. Each linked in some way with Earth's protective shell of gases. We think of life as a product of our atmosphere, but the reverse is true also. For living things have not only adjusted to our air supply, they have altered it drastically. Every leaf is an oxygen factory. And over the vast stretch of time, plants have produced the oxygen-rich atmosphere we depend on today. But if you look outward into other parts of the solar system, you find huge planets with atmospheres made up almost entirely of hydrogen and helium. Compared to these giants of the solar system, Earth-sized planets are remarkably different in their atmospheric makeup. The atmosphere of Mars has 95% carbon dioxide, about 2.5% nitrogen, plus a little water vapor and other gases. Venus has much the same, with 96% carbon dioxide and about 4% nitrogen. But Earth is the planet of life. Its atmosphere is rich in oxygen, 21%. The rest is nitrogen, 78% and about 1% other gases, including carbon dioxide and water vapor. What has made planet Earth so different? And is it different now than it was during its early life, billions of years ago? One way to explore these questions is to sample the mixture of gases trapped beneath Earth's surface. In the crater of a North American volcano, then spew out gases from deep within the Earth. Scientists believe that the composition of this volcano gas may be something like the mix of gases that originally spewed out, creating Earth's early atmosphere. If so, a volcano is a time capsule that can tell us something about the composition of Earth's original gas shell. The scientist fills her vacuum bottle directly from a vent. When the sample is analyzed, it shows that these gases are very different from the air we breathe today. And quite possibly, they are like the mixture that spewed out to create an atmosphere for the young planet Earth. Volcano gas contains 82% water vapor, 11% carbon dioxide, 6% sulfur compounds, only about 1% nitrogen and no oxygen. Remarkably different from Earth's present atmosphere. There is little doubt that the atmosphere has changed drastically. And now this atmosphere, altered by living things, forms a protective shell around our planet. But to understand how it protects, we need to examine how the atmosphere changes with altitude and how it interacts with radiation from the sun. As climbers move up through the lower atmosphere, one change becomes apparent. The air seems to get thinner and breathing more difficult. Near the top, a sealed bag has expanded almost to bursting. These observations are related to the fact that, as you climb above more of the atmosphere, the weight of air above becomes less, lowering the pressure. At 11,000 feet, a little over three kilometers, 
air pressure has dropped to about two-thirds of its value at sea level. At 18,000 feet, the atmospheric pressure has fallen to half its sea level value. To probe the atmosphere up to 100,000 feet, scientists use balloons. The balloon starts out small, so that it will have room to expand as the air pressure drops with altitude. At the top of its flight, pressure is only one one-hundredth of its sea level value, and the balloon expands to about 100 times its launch volume. But pressure is not the only thing that changes as you rise through the atmosphere. Everyone who has climbed a mountain knows that temperature drops as you go higher, the reason for snow-capped peaks. The temperature continues to drop up to about 30,000 feet, around 10 kilometers. This lowest layer of the atmosphere is called the troposphere. Here, Earth's sun-warm surface puts air into turbulent motion. This is where water vapor plays its role, condensing into clouds. Great storm systems move through the troposphere, bringing our weather. But the troposphere is only a narrow part of our atmospheric shell. Above it lies the stratosphere. Leaving the troposphere, a passenger jet entering the stratosphere would pass through an interesting temperature reversal. As it climbs, temperature steadies and begins to rise. This heating is caused by the absorption of certain wavelengths of solar energy. We usually think of the sun's energy as the wavelengths that produce the colors of the rainbow. But the sun's output includes far more radiation than the visible spectrum. It includes the long waves called infrared, the radiation we perceive as heat. On the other side of the visible spectrum are shorter waves, ultraviolet. Ultraviolet causes sunburn, and so a healthy dose of sunscreen is necessary at high altitudes, where the atmospheric filter is thinner, allowing more ultraviolet to get through. But the main protective filter lies above, in the stratosphere where most of the incoming ultraviolet is absorbed by one of the atmosphere's gases, oxygen. During the absorption of ultraviolet, some oxygen molecules are broken up into individual oxygen atoms. These can regroup to form ozone, a gas which has three atoms of oxygen instead of the usual two. Ozone is an effective absorber of ultraviolet, converting it into harmless heat energy. It's this absorption of ultraviolet radiation by ozone that heats up the stratosphere. But what's the atmosphere like above the stratosphere? Earth's outermost atmosphere can only be reached for direct study by means of powerful rockets. minutes of its ascent, an orbiter experiences several reversals in the outside temperature. Cooler through the troposphere, warmer through the stratosphere. Moving up, the temperature will reverse again and begins to plummet as the craft passes through the coldest part of the atmosphere, a region called the mesosphere. Less than one one thousandth of the atmosphere lies above. Yet, there are enough gas molecules here to collide with particles speeding in from space, causing them to glow. 
making them visible from the ground as meteors. Above the mesosphere, the air is thin, almost a vacuum. But there are still enough molecules to collide with charged particles coming from the sun, the solar wind. Near Earth's poles, these collisions create a spectacular atmospheric display called the aurora. Here, air molecules receive the full impact of the sun's most powerful ultraviolet radiation, causing temperatures to soar. This region of hot, super-thin gas is called the thermosphere. So our atmosphere can be organized into regions that form a protective shell. Its structure is brought about by the way atmospheric gases interact with incoming solar radiation. These interactions affect the temperature, giving our atmosphere its layered structure. The thermosphere, with its high temperatures and auroras. The mesosphere, a region of extreme cold between upper and lower atmospheres. The stratosphere, where ozone plays its protective role. And finally, the troposphere, the region of clouds and weather. But the troposphere is only a narrow layer at the bottom of the vast surrounding shell that protects and continues to fascinate us, Earth's atmosphere. <laughs>